Britain and the Philippines mentioned this week about buying a motorcycle in the Philippines and he's had a look at the second hand ones. First thing I want to say about second hand motorbikes is a lot of them are not what I would call a second hand motorbike. They're often what I would call a second hand taxi. Because um, what people do is they'll get monthly installments, then you know you see these Habble Habble. Um, if not a Habble Habble, it's basically a passenger motorbike where you hire the motorbike and you'll see that they run up and down with passengers, whatever they need to commute. You can have up to five people on them, etc. And you can guess what sort of wear and tear you get on the motorbike. Um, it's obviously not good. Um, they might get problems with the bike, etc. And skip a few payments, etc. Then those bikes end up going back to the shop and then they've got this little bit of reduction on the sale price. But basically you've got a motorbike that is past the sell-by date, hasn't been maintained, hasn't been serviced unless it was done by that garage. The other thing with buying a second-hand motorbike is you're often buying debt. The motorbike may have been, say, 40000 and it's had 15000 um, pesos added as a loan as such they add that to the price when it becomes second hand so you sit there and you go hang on a minute this this is either the price of new it's actually the new price plus minus the payments plus the credit added so um, in the real world we wouldn't actually think this was normal but in the Philippines it is that's why the second hand prices are so high it's got debt on it um, they want you to pay the debt off from the person who originally bought the bike now I'll talk a little bit about my own motorbikes and scooters and stuff in the Philippines this first one is my little yellow Yamaha um, 50cc um, second hand I paid 13,000 pesos for it um, it's been rebuilt three times I mean it's been completely stripped down rebuilt it's not currently running at the moment but it can be rebuilt again because the actual uh, motor and that on these are famous for being ultra reliable um, getting an ultra reliable mechanic is the hard bit um, I haven't stripped it down myself I've had a couple of mechanics do it and it's run for months and it, the, to be honest the reason it fails is because when I come back to the UK or wherever people stop using it so when you go back it's just not running anymore and they end up overhauling the whole thing doing a full strip down and rebuild does it need that level probably not but it doesn't hardly cost me anything for them to rebuild it anyway but the, the thing with the brandy thing um, a the reliability is there. I wouldn't go with any Chinese scooters or bikes and I'll cover that in my next vehicle but this little scooter is still uh, one of the ones we have. Um, my mother-in-law uses it from time to time to go go into town and back. They're also good for new parts, good for old parts, good for fake parts, easy to fix, easy to find spares and reason I got it. Also the seat is big enough to actually drop some large beer bottles in because um, it used to be really good for running to the local shop. The next scooter is one I took the payments over on. Uh, friend Eric was going back to the US. There was only I think 19,000 pesos left on this one because um, he would still owe the debt if he come back anyway. So I said well I need some transport I'll take it over. First thing, it was Chinese. Second thing, it was junk. Um, it's not Eric's fault. The other scooter he had, because this was um, his partner Gigi, his was actually falling apart when it actually went back, because he took the other one back and the, the sides, side panels had fallen off, it had lost all its shape. and it's, it's not from abuse. They're just really, really junk. This one, um, if you went for a ride for like 30 minutes and then come back to it, it wouldn't start. But it, then if you left it another 10 minutes, it might start, might not. And you couldn't find any faults on it. You know, it just didn't run. The, the electrics failed. Um, I replaced several parts. Bear in mind, this vehicle is less than two years old. But it is falling apart. It's falling to pieces. All the trim didn't fit together anymore properly. Um, it was just junk, utter, utter junk. 
to the point, although there was only 19,000 pesos left on it, I took it back and says, look, I don't want it. You know, because um, they come out and because it had left me in several locations where I couldn't get home. Um, I had to be like brought back with somebody else, had to be picked up, etc. It was so unreliable, it's not funny. Um, they're basically counterfeiting the uh, Japanese bikes and coming nowhere near. You know, it's, I suppose it's like Tyco, because I think Tyco is originally a toy factory, um, so they've taken over fire equipment. But the, the point is, the quality just isn't anywhere near. And I know some people have said, oh, I've had no problems with my Chinese bike. Like, really? You know, come on. <laughs> You, you may not be using it as much as we do, um, but the fact is, it was abysmal. So one two five, it lacked power, it lacked um, reliability. Um, it was just no good. It, it it was just to the point where you weren't safe to go out on it um, because the lights would fail. So you go and start it, no lights. And then the following day, the lights are working. All the electric circuits were faulty. All the, um, you know, the electronic starter, everything, been changed, and it was just horrendous. Um, this is why I say don't buy Chinese bikes. Now, there's another problem with the Chinese stuff, which I will cover in the next video, because it's not just the Chinese stuff. Because my next bike is my current bike, which has still got some problems, but for a different reason. This is my Kawasaki Rouser. Uh, it's a 220cc motorbike. Uh, I think I paid 113,000 pesos for it. It's the best bike I've had in the Philippines, but there's one issue, and I think this is relation. It relates to anything you have done in the Philippines, mechanical-wise. You need a good mechanic. Bear in mind, this comes from the main dealer. They did not know how to set the gears up. So when you, you you drop a gear down, then flick it up to go to neutral, it will not do it because the gears aren't set up properly. Um, it reminds me I've, I've got to find out how to adjust that because it's something I haven't done. I, I'm, I'm actually live without it. But they didn't know how to do it. The mechanics don't know how to do it. So it's nothing wrong with the bike. It's what's wrong with the mechanic because they, they haven't sorted it out. And bear in mind, this is brand spanking new. Um, you've got to bear in mind some of these bikes must be coming in as spares being rebuilt as bikes to avoid some of the tax duty but bear in mind they don't know how to fix some of this stuff like that it needs slightly tweaking and I know talking to uh, I can't remember his name now he, he used to work at the Bacardi factory uh, many I think his name was Nick I haven't seen him for years but he went to an island where his wife comes from and there was five motorbikes there not running right and this they were talking about this mechanic going to get spares and stuff and he fixed all the bikes while the mechanic was away because one of the bikes wasn't starting these these were like for the um uh, the tricycads you know the, the the motorbikes with the sidecar they weren't for like they weren't his or anything they were just like these but what it was is things needed adjusting you got things like the um the fuel mixture wrong you've got things like the um, the idling speeds too much and pumping too much fuel through and th things like that but because he was um, many moons ago an aircraft technician as well as he's been running Picardi uh, factories for years he's very very good um, at mechanics etc and as such, he fixed his bikes. By the time this mechanic had come back, everything was running. But not only running, but were running a lot better than they had ever done. Um, because he knew what he was doing. And this is like this is a, a problem with the brain drain in the Philippines. Because you won't find a skilled mechanic sat at the side of the road. A skilled mechanic is an OFW. He's earning his money overseas. Um... The, it's very hard to get good skilled people. I remember watching a documentary relating to the Burns unit in Manila where six out of the eight people that do the operations and stuff aren't there anymore. They're all gone, OFWs. The, the, the OFW market has sucked away these people um, 
and we're seeing it in the UK. Uh, I should do a political video on this actually, um, because the UK is struggling for. Uh, there's been in the news they're going to struggle for drivers this year uh, for the Christmas runs um, because it's all legislation and nonsense. That you know, I had it come through today because there's a membership of one of the organisations I'm with. They are now requesting that we do an ethics and morals course, which has nothing to do with engineering. So I will actually cancel my membership because all it is is these people are creating a course you must do for £140. And I'll just go, better answer, cancel my subscription, cancel my membership in protest. I'm not, don't want it. Um, if you'll give me some of value, fair enough, but you're stealing money. But anyway, brain drain in, in the Philippines. So you're getting a lot of people that are mechanics because they've got a spanner. You've got an air-conditioned engineer because he's got uh, R22, which is obviously no longer allowed in Europe. Um, or an electrician because he's got a screwdriver. You need to be very wary when buying second-hand because they haven't been maintained um, and if they have you've got a often got a tinkerer rather than a mechanic and then if you're buying new how are you going to service and maintain it who's going to look after it um, from my own experience I recommend you deal with this yourself because your best buddy Filipino buddy um, will get his cousin or his brother or somebody to do it because they're related and he could be the worst mechanic on the planet but because they're related he'll do it right you know that he'll do it right and it comes back with more faults than you started with so be, be very aware of that that's why when I bought my motorbike I bought it to basically run into the ground um, I will maintain it to what what I need to do I do not want anybody touching it I don't want it altered it's actually locked in my office that's <laughs> that's how uh, um, serious I take it it's actually been lifted into my personal office doors locked nobody goes in there till I come back to the Philippines it's 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 off off limits to stop anybody touching it um, you may think well that's a bit over the top but if you park it somewhere, somebody will faff around with it, I'll tell you now. Um, be it a neighbor trying to steal parts, be it somebody who thinks, oh, I want to play motorbikes, whatever. Be it somebody who says, well, it hasn't been run for a while, I'll take it for a spin round the road and crashes it. Whatever it is, put it away, it's yours. Don't assume people will look after something is the way you do, because they often won't, because it's not theirs. And that's often the cultural issue. It's not there, so they don't care.